And hey, everybody, Blair Dunkley here, and I'm here today with Brian uh, Kinney. Is it pronounced Kinney? Yeah. Perfect. It is. Very good. Good, good. And um, yeah, we're doing another live, um, you know, Facebook Live with uh, that's a coaching profiling session. So um, you're going to need to fill me in a little bit because we have never met. I have had the chance to meet your lovely uh, wife and daughter but not you yet. So it's been a week of kinnies. So <laughs> you're getting indoctrinated into our world. Yeah, exactly. And so if you could fill me in briefly as I'm driving away here uh, for some future information that I can pop up, um, yeah. if you can um, fill me in and tell me a little something about yourself. Sure. So, um, I'm uh, 50 years old, uh, soon to be 51 in uh, another month or so, a nice young age. Yes. And um, I've, um, yeah, I've had quite a, quite a, just an awesome experience, uh, really. I played, played, uh, been athletic my whole life, played professional baseball for a while, and um, spend uh, a lot of time, uh, you know, traveling. I do uh, been in business, found myself in the world of business and ministry, kind of half and half uh, over nice. the years, and um, have, have thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, have learned to balance the two and really kind of commingle them as they they really partner together. Nice. Um, my wife and I have, uh, as you met some of them, uh, three daughters, and it's yep. been uh, just a tremendous blessing and a major challenge at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely so, true. Um, so that's, that's awesome. So to, uh, currently I, I consult to a variety of businesses, um, have been spending most of my time the last several years, uh, working in the security space, um, mm -hmm. in physical security, um, private, uh, work and also in national security with, uh, several, several agencies. So nice. I get, I get to kind of do a little bit of both. I travel a whole bunch. And so I cherish my time at home and, uh, and, uh, so yeah, that's quick, uh, Three minute overview. Cool. So what would you like me to profile or coach you on? So fill me. Oh, um, so you are still in, what are your, your hobbies? Um, what, I know that you like sport, but um, are you doing anything? You're active. I heard that, but any specifics? Um, you know, I really enjoy team sports. So, um, nice. you know, I, uh, I enjoy watching them. I uh, played, uh, you know, I like to play a little golf once in a while, which is mm -hmm. really akin to a couple times a year, the realistically, <laughs> okay. um, um, but I enjoy it. Uh, played a little men's hockey league. Um, and, but I, I really just enjoy watching it kind of an enthusiast. I, in college, I got my degree in, in broadcast communication. Nice. So I don't mind. Uh, I've got the gift. I've got the gift of gab, if you will. Sweet. So uh, I, I watch the games. I think to, certainly to enjoy it. I love the competition, but I also I, I also announce it in my head, if you will, <laughs> when I'm watching it. So cool. um, I've got I've got a lot of activity going on inside my head when uh, uh, during a game. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool. So um, how can I help you? What would you like me to either profile you on or? Um, coach or combination of both, uh, dealer's choice. I mean, okay, I'm just moving my computer a little bit here. Uh, no worries. To get a little better, a little bit better signal here in view. Um, a combination of both, I guess. I mean, I, I'm, I'm flexible. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little curious on the, on the coaching. I always like, uh, I think iron sharpens iron. So I, I enjoy opportunity for someone to me and so into me and and um you know tell me things that i need I, I love the principle tell me something i need to hear and that maybe not necessarily i want to hear because i think that's that betters me okay well let's um what area of your life would you like uh i've got the principles that you want to be profiled or coached on so i get it uh pick an area of your life uh, business, um, personal, um, yeah, business, personal, yeah. whatever. Um, let's let's go with personal. Um, Interesting. Okay. Um, this this do, this do personal. If there's any time left over, any business bleeds into that, I'll take that too. But let's do personal. Um. Well, first of all, I think personal is relatively uh, safe pick. 
um, more so because your your language pattern is one where you're well it's interesting um okay i can dive into the weeds here um you've got interesting an interesting model for your beliefs your beliefs are very strong very clear very focused very intentional um and uh, compassionate is uh, one of the things that you come across as, but I also uh, perceive um, uh, a level of control uh, that also is influence, but it, it tends to uh, flip-flop between control and influence. It doesn't necessarily um, uh, create the level of flexibility you'd like to have in your family and friends. Um, but you are an influencer and a, a person who manages uh, the situations and the people that you're in um, uh, well to very well. Um, but you've got very internalized, strong beliefs about what you do. So that comes across as a um, subtle form of control. You remind me your language pattern, not you personally, but your language pattern reminds me of a client I once had uh, where he was um, uh, very much in control and didn't always know how to fully leverage himself to get beyond that sense of control. And this one, this area here bleeds back and forth between business and um, and personal life. So because of your strong beliefs of how things should be, not necessarily how things are, almost like how things have to be for you. I, I would would go, I'd step it up a notch. It, it go, sort of goes into a have to be, um, which has certain advantages and certain limitations. Um, the advantages are you're very clear. You've got clear boundaries, clear expectations. You're, you're clear. The people around you may not feel that they have the opportunity to explore um, who they are, what they are, the way that they'd like to do things um, with the level of uh, of uh, flexibility that they would like to have. Um, but it builds a very uh, safe environment, um, in, in my personal opinion, sometimes um, a little too safe because people um, like to explore but uh your model of the world is one that it's a dangerous world out there and it is a dangerous world especially one who works in security um you do remind me of some of the uh military and um uh security as well as the police that i have worked with law enforcement people that i've worked with who have uh seen some of the worst side of humanity um, you compensate with with the um, with limited and I, I apologize for saying this but with limited um, the emotional balance is contained uh, it's not expansive um, I would suggest well again it, it's it's effective for your business I don't think it's effective for you you personally because your containment and the way that you contain thoughts in your own mind and manage issues in your own mind is effective for security um and i don't think you've built something quite as broad as you need to for people um uh, your your family in this case i i don't know everybody i just know one daughter and your wife um and uh, I'm sure they love and adore you. I get no indication of anything else other than that. Uh, yet at the same point in time, I think there's there's limitations and exploration issues. Now, um, the, the, the freedom that comes with that also comes with potential liabilities. And it, it's just, it's always trade-offs. Mm -hmm. um, but where people are and how they see each other, see you and see the world around you and how they view the world around them is going to be highly influenced by you and how you 
organize yourself, your life, your relationship with people. Um, and you take a lot of, um, you have a very deep faith uh, in your religion and that religious conviction sometimes um, is not stated as flexibly as you believe it. I think you have a way of stating things more that gives the impression of more rigidity than you actually have, but you also believe in that level of rigidity because it's saved your butt in way more, so many situations. Like you, you, the language to build up true. that level of of, of uh, clarity and, and certainty that you have. See, you work off of a lot of certainty issues and clarity is what you are trying to cultivate, but you're going after certainty because it's been, um, the certainty model has been a, a clear exit for you so that you can take on a command and control model, which is not always working at home, but it works in business uh, so well. And, and your decision-making is too subconscious for you really to leverage it a lot higher up than where you currently are. You'd need to get way more conscious of it, but you're going after certainty. So that limits, it puts a ceiling on your clarity of how to get more effective with decision-making at, sorry, it's a blend of the two because I'm just noticing how your language pattern is flip-flopping between you, one area of your life is bleeding into the other area of life and vice versa. And then you, and you also have religion that comes in because you wind up, um, you found, like I would bet dimes to dollars that your wife was one of the few people that really got you, like really, really got you as a, as a person, as a man. And she was more than willing to accept you from as who you are. That's not because I profiled her. That's be, through the profiling of you and going, she gets you, you get her. And that whole connection there has got a, a lot of, of um, intentionality around it. That intentionality around it um, is, again, going after certainty. And you're very clear. Um, she gets very clear. She's yeah, going that's after so, business. That's so good. That's so good. I, and in in my if I if, if I can yeah comment, please I'm go gonna, go ahead break in yeah. any time. I no, no, I just go on. That's, for that's too good. Long I mean, when I got a good profile no. in, in my head, and I got a good one. Here. No, no, I don't so, want to interrupt your flow. I don't want to interrupt. No, your no, flow. no. Go ahead. In, I, in, I can pull this stuff in, back up. I do it every day. So in, I do it in my way world too often. and. In various things that I do or details that I'm working on, it you know there's an element of life and death unquestionably, and yeah. so it is, it's it's pre-planned, premeditated, very specific. Yep. Um, certainty is a great word. You know, I I don't yep. ask questions for information, for information's sake. I ask questions to process it and put a, put a continuum together of this is what we're going to do, and yep. and so when I come home. It's a challenge because I, yes. I, if my wife and you know, I'm, tra I'm very transparent. My wife and my daughters will say, "You just don't let us in." And I, in my mind, yeah. I'm thinking, "I am," but then, but then I, I must not be as well as I as as much as I think I am. Um, you, you compartmentalize know. too much, and you are intending to. I use up. that example. I say, "Men, men live in boxes. Women's minds. It's not a negative. It's like spaghetti. Everything's connected to everything else, and I could never live that way." I have to break up my world in boxes. When I'm in the, and when I'm in this box, the other boxes don't exist to me. I hear you loud and clear. However, that's only one model that happens to work, and that model doesn't necessarily allow you to extend your belief models into your family and become more flexible. Nor does it allow you to optimize your business opportunities in security. It makes you a good leader of, pardon, I don't know where you are in what your business is, but you are very effective as, an, as a uh, local to um, somebody who can oversee a local issue 
uh, from a senior position, but building up the whole everything there and running it um, at a very high level, um, like national security level. Um, you can do elements of it, but not your mind is is too compartmentalized because it's not it is too boxed uh, to really mm -hmm. expand and, and connect the relevant data because the relevant data is not relevant for you the way that you operate because you have to deal with the situation on the ground. And that's really the the way that your mind operates. Not, not saying it's. I'm, this is not a judgment. This is just a statement of how your language pattern reflects into my brain and my high probability assumptions that I'm making from this as a person that I've met other security officials at very very different levels, from ground people to operational people to senior strategists in in security over the years and just hearing their language pattern um you have elements of strategy but that strategy goes gets driven right down to the ground with you it gets driven into extraordinarily practical application and compartmentalizing it is something that you do to survive and to have a life um, that compartmentalization is not engaging well with your family and you wanted personal, well, there's a gap because it's over compartmentalized to have a broad family relationship that is dynamic, changing, flexible, and non-threat related because um, you relate, um, you see the world through threats and not, not inappropriately for your job at all, but not necessarily totally appropriate for your family um, and the way that they organize information. Um, mm -hmm. It was That's interesting. Your, your wife doesn't see the world the way that it does. My, my thing here is um, there are ways to overlap boxes as opposed to compartmentalize everything and to create openings between boxes in your mind strategically to uh, level up your, your information because you, over containing information means that you're limiting the information to only the most relevant chunk in that moment to gain clarity. I mean, and that's what you're going after. You're going after something that's clear so that you can become certain, but the become certain part removes any other possibilities, which means that you won't take in data at a certain point unless it, it hits you over the head. And frankly, somebody's got to freaking hit you over the head with extra data before you believe it because you're not changing your mind. So you're politely stubborn um, and a, a serious, very, very appropriately politically correct SOB when you need to be. And you don't mind doing that at all because somebody has to, because somebody has to take charge of the situation, but your data collection is limited and you shut it down not necessarily a bad thing at the level of game that you're playing but it also is the thing that caps you where you're at but it's also oh, the piece that. that caps you where you're at with your family as well so you want to have a more relational more fluid more more a softer side of yourself coming out it ain't gonna happen with the models that you got easily. Like it's not that it can't, yeah. it's just that it doesn't because the models that you're thinking it through just lock you up and go, this is yeah. how I am. And then you go, how the hell do I become everything, anything else? Because man, I've practiced this. I've locked myself yeah. down in this manner so that I can control and survive my life. I get yeah, it. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And I, I even think back of what I do professionally. And of course, you know, little of us, little, uh, do we know in college what we're going to do and end up, Absolutely. you know, coming across? Yeah. But but in college, as a as a as I said, playing baseball and then and pro ball for a while, I was a pitcher. So the pitcher's mentality is it's oh, about yeah. me. It's about I'm throwing this ball. I'm going to throw it, and if and if he hits a home run, I've got 15 seconds to clear my mind and get ready for the next one. And so my yeah. mind pro processes stuff really quickly, and boom to the next one. Boom to the next yeah. one. Yeah. And because there is no room there it's, it's really re so that thing's been reinforced for me as a, as a oh absolutely and and so in in the in the career now when there's a a detail or a job or, or some you know event that i'm responsible for 
you know, the people I work with and for are like, okay, you come in, you will come in, you will take charge of this stadium, this whatever, whatever, yep, and, whatever it and is. you're yeah. going to, you're going to implement it. You're going to implement yep. it and it's going to come off exactly the way we need it. And, and I, and I thrive on that. Yep. And, and you but can it's do challenging that. at home. It's challenging at home. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like, um, and I don't think it's now particularly a surprise to you that it is challenging at home because the way that you've boxed it out isn't exactly <laughs> the way that people love to be, um, that love and adore you want you to love and adore I them can back. Hear them cheering. I, can, I can hear them cheering on the, the internet. You know, I can oh, hear no. them cheering out there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's good. It's Sorry. Good. That's totally, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. Listen, it's, I know that it's there, but yep. sometimes, you know, over my, over time, it's like, it's, it's valuable when you come across somebody like my, my iron versus sharpens iron comment. It's valuable yes. when you come across somebody who can put into words, which is what you're doing. Yes. Things that I only feel, I don't know yep. the words. I don't, I can't categorize. I know the feeling. And I want to get there. I want to go there, but I don't know how to get there. And and, and that that other, you know, the oil you know, and water it, kind of thing. Yeah, no, it's not. And and yes, you've been, you have belief systems that say it's oil and water. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to be. It's in one model. It's one model. But you've got great potential to flex that beautiful background that you have in your life. Um, you've got, so, oh, sorry, I'm processing again just for a moment here. Okay, if, if I take the raw data that is your language pattern and I take, what are your beliefs? Well, one of the things is there is a ton of care and concern that you have for people. So, um, family members, especially. So, um, pardon me. You're fine. Family members, especially. And um, your, your way of thinking is lacking because nobody is really exposed to you uh, through circumstances and problem solving to a different way of needing to expand yourself. So it hasn't been necessary. You have people that are around you that can adapt to you and understand who you are. And you've needed to get to this level of um, expertise for your job. And yeah, you go in and you take over things and you are like, I, I, didn't know this for a fact, but high probability you're like the guy that goes in and resolves the issue on the ground, but you take over. If there was a SWAT team, if it reminds me of a SWAT team commander who goes in and literally um, your language pattern, you go in there and you go, okay, guys, um, I'm taking charge. I'm taking over. This is the stuff. This is how we're going to do it. And I will resolve this and everybody feed everything to me and you hear the stuff you take important crap 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 important 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 data the rest of it no i've got enough i i've got all the critical data points in order to make a decision on how to strategically execute these are the execution plans that need to be to happen it has to go uh, a b c d and these are the ways that it has to happen but you exactly. ran a family like that, and they're not <laughs> little, going little to inflexible. love it. You, sorry, yeah. little inflexible. A little, yeah, you, yeah. Um, okay, that's a very polite I'm way of saying. Generous. I'm being too generous. Uh, yeah, and I didn't want to be harder because I don't think I have to be. Because you also have a tendency to internally beat the crap out of yourself when you make an error, especially with people that you love. So I don't want to give you more ammunition to beat the crap out of yourself, um, but I do want to get the point across. So mm -hmm. you know that's the other piece of it because you need care and concern. You need that uh, you know uh, TLC too asking for that from your family is not something that you're particularly comfortable with doing um, and they give it to you and you sometimes don't know how to accept it. And sometimes to be blunt about it, I doubt even if you hear it because it is one of those, 
Uh, nope, don't not relevant data. Next, and that's a shame because it's one of the things when you do connect with it, when you do feel it, and the person who got through to you is more than likely your wife, where she connected with you on an emotional level and got you. Like she gets you, she understands you. She didn't trap you because you are, well, untrappable in that's that the way. Word that, that's the word that was in my head. Yeah. yeah. You're untrappable because you know that's you. You have to come willingly. Uh, it's got to be a voluntary basis to go and say yes. If you smelt a trap, you'd be gone. Like you know, and you've got great instincts for all of that. All of that stuff is lit up, and I don't want to go into the background that got you there because that we don't need to. But the background that got you there is is stuff that you rely on. Um, it's a love-hate relationship with all that stuff that's there. You like it. You don't like it. You would like to be, you you honor and respect it. But at the same point in time, that those background pieces were where a lot of tough decisions were made and you made them and you live with them and you're comfortable and you can compartmentalize those and put them behind you. Well, that's one model. But if you started stacking some of the boxes rather than dropping them out the back and you place them strategically in your mind. Like one of the things that I do is when I need to compartmentalize stuff, like when my dad went into a coma and I started to really deal with the emotion of it. And I, I had a multi-million dollar company that I was running. My mom uh, was my partner and she was, you know, pretty, um, I don't want to say messed up exactly, but she wasn't at her best, uh, understandably so, because her husband just went into um, a, a coma and she was trying to cope with it, plus running a, a training organization, plus managing, um, at that time, I think it was 18 or 20 campuses around the country. And and I, well, that was more my job than hers, but hers was to train coaches to be able to cope and she's having to cope with something that is temporarily uncopable, well, it isn't uncopable. You you express your feelings, you deal with those emotions, you you um, express them and move on. And one of those things, just health wise, is unexpressed emotions is now having. You know, there's a book. Geez, what is it? Um, I got to pull that one up. It's one my wife's reading, but we were looking at that and the detail in, in the research has now proven a link between repressed emotion and illness. And that's because the HPA, which is H is um, uh, hormones, um, the P is pituitary and adrenal glands, when when those three create an effective chemical cocktail, our body has um, the ability um, to then put that that chemical cocktail in the right position because we have what are called referred to. I believe the the research was calling these cancer buds. We're walking around with cancer like precancer cells in our body. Everybody has them, and we've got them for life. We either launch them or we don't. And how we don't mm -hmm. um, trigger them is, well, one of the ways that we can trigger them is by, H by having HPA in our system. And that HPA then triggers uh, a reaction that then starts um, popping cancer in us. And that is now not opinion. That now is um, clear research, not, not commonly stated, but in the book that I'm reading, they cite research study after research study after research study that has gone this route, but it's not widely accepted as a the trigger or a significant trigger for cancer, yet selected high-level oncologists are calling this as the thing, the precursor indication. They tracked women in particular um, with cancer, breast cancer, uh, I believe, no, it was um, below the belt, cancer below the belt. And they um, had, 
on a quiz about how happy and how you cope with emotions. They had a, um, a questionnaire that they had filled out, which then pointed out that uh, out of 100% of the women that were surveyed, 75% of them had uh, responded to that and were predicted to have um, cancer uh, based on the questionnaire. In 10 years, the scary statistic was that 78% of those women were dead. And 100, so wow. 100, well, uh, over a hundred percent of the people in the study um, that were predicted were actually dead from cancer, uh, which was, you know, tremendous. So wow. the power of that is incredible. So compartmentalizing is a form of repression. Just sharing that with you. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're not dealing with it. It's you're dealing with it in a way that you're taking it out. You don't recognize the emotion of it, but it's still your family will see this. Your family will feel this. They, you won't feel it because you're telling yourself you're normal. When I was, I mean, I had a, a brilliant um, psychiatrist that I, I, I know and liked for a very long time. And he was so clear about uh, how the neurochemistry worked. And we walk around in this chemical cocktail um, of a um, three-month to six-month moving average. So 90 days ago, um, uh, there was a, your normal was X. And X plus 90, you can either go up or down. And if you're going up in your X plus 90, you're going happier. If you're going down, you're going sadder. But if your your 90 day moving average is trending down, this is now your normal down here, not up here. Mm -hmm. And so you'll call normal normal at different life stages and life experiences. And you will cope yeah, like it's normal. It doesn't make it average. It makes it normal. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things that I recognized. And so expressing those emotions and getting them out is critical. But being able to have the mind models to do that quickly is one of the things that mind models help a person do. Because going after certainty locks it in to a repressed state. Going after clarity gets a conversation, even if it's with yourself gets you into a conversation of getting you clear about what you're feeling. And at some point, like you said, like you appreciated me naming and labeling the feelings that you're feeling, not really knowing how to do it yourself, but feeling the possibility that there's something there that it feels right, but I don't know quite how to say it. Well, being able to get the clarity to ask questions of family members, of being able to express that, more quickly, take care of somebody else, and then be able to manage yourself with the models that you have is what I had to learn how to do. I mean, there's not many people that actually are in a place where I can honestly say not many people have a business opportunity where they have to send people into harm's way. I mean, we had a situation on one of the reserves in, in northern um, Canada where there was a known issue. And that issue was one where in these remote reserves, people get shot frequently or at least shot at. And the coaches that I sent up there on that reserve actually um, – were fired at and the, in their group room on the first shot, they shot high, sort of like a slight warning shot. Then they shot low, like not ground level, but right where people would be sitting and uh, Eddie, everybody was already on the floor and two more shots were fired going inside one of the building and outside of the other uh, part of the side of the building um, with high powered rifles, hunting rifles. So um, that stuff gets serious, but, I have to know how to manage my own emotion 
and recognize what I, I'm doing, be very clear about my process and recognizing that they're making that decision. So that level of clarity mm -hmm. is important, but knowing that process and what they choose to do. And they're choosing without a doubt. They had full choice, those coaches who I sent in there. So anyway, yeah. um, just sharing my little snippet. Well, I've also gone in to uh, uh, do negotiation in high risk situations, but that's another sure. story for another profiling session. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really good. That's um, it's very good. Uh, you know, again, in my vernacular, you know, um, characterizing it and and uh, you know, because it can feel like the the proverbial putting trying to stick Jello to the wall. You know, yes. I see it, I can feel it, I know where it's at, but my technique of of understanding it is like the the Jello on the wall, and it's not real productive. No, um, and and the Jello so, on the wall and, melts. And slides yeah, off the do. wall, and then it's gone. And and so so the the, the reaction can be, well, I'm just not going to try to put Jello on the wall and just avoid the 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 friction, and things seem good, but then that's when dad or husband is a little quiet, it, like you're not engaging with us. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm thinking things are quiet, things are cool. Thank God, they're peaceful. Yeah, yeah, and and in fact. In fact, you know, it's it's really just masking it, right? It's just yep, it's it it's is. no activity is, you know, thinking that there's it's not. So, well, the model your model good. the world good is, for me. you know, if uh, nobody's yelling, screaming, or or attacking me, um, everything's good. It's all good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Know, you. I mean, it. like, I mean, uh, for twenty, almost twenty five years of my life, I was working in an environment where um, every night I'd be worried about. Well, at our peak, we had a thousand students, 800 of them uh, potentially suicidal. So, I mean, you know, that's a lot. And then I had all of our staff to be concerned about. And especially in the early days when everything was was there, it was uh, crazy and and complicated and difficult and everything else. So it it's challenging. But, you know, if you really want to shift things around, you know, um, this isn't the normal topic area, but the, the mind models that are in rewiring your mind for wealth, um, if you focus them on yourself and shifting, wealth was taken in a very broad sense. And the wealth that I talk about is money, monetary wealth, but personal wealth. And without having mm -hmm. effective relationships, you can't have personal wealth. So, you know, for mm -hmm. people out there, uh, if you want to uh, jump on rewiringthemind.com, um, there is a button right up at the top of the page there where you can click uh, rewiring your mind for wealth. And it's got yeah. 63 mind models in it that enable people to break out of how they're thinking about it, get out of overwhelm and test these mind models. They're not right, wrong, good, bad. They're all evaluation based mind models. In other words, try them on, test them, see what works for you. Uh, clarity versus certainty evaluation versus judgment and you've blended e evaluation and judgment so tightly in your mind that if you started separating the two i think you'd recognize that you can make judgments in certain situations where you have to because we all have to we cannot live in a, in a world where everything can be answered where we can get data points for every single thing but we we have to make determinations and judgments are required because assumptions are required. But especially at home with your wife and daughters, those assumptions are far less required. And a judgment can turn into an evaluation. So you can sit back, have a discussion and weigh it without using the automatic judgment responses based on minimal information and a ton of experience. You can update on the experience and evaluate, 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 because they can provide way more data points. So, and well, that's I did say, I did say, tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. But in fact, this is what I want to hear. So this is double positive. Good. So it's very good. So I was going to say, how was this going for you? How's, how's <laughs> this going? 
Oh, it's 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 fabulous. I, I mean, listen, uh, the everything you say is is hitting hitting the markers for me, um, and so because of because of all that you said, I love information, right? Because it gives yes. me something to point to in a reference. So this is information, um, and I can I can you know I can do something with it. And um, see, one of the things so that's, that that's, that's, that's sorry, go ahead. No, no, okay, that's sure. I, I can then do something with it. It's it's yeah. kind of like I, if I've said it once, you know, it's a thousand times where, um, you know, I can't, you know, it's like I can't change it if I don't know what it is, which again yeah. fits that model. And exactly. sometimes people, family can't tell me what it is because it's just kind of all the time for them. And it's not one moment. It's just everywhere. And I'm looking, give me a case study that yeah. I can analyze. You know, and that's just how my mind would work, what works. And so. Um, yeah, exactly. See, I can do that. I've got more than enough life stories and situations because I've got another one here. Um, you know, you'd, you'd be really interested. I'd, I'd be fascinated to see you get into something like mind model coach training or operant, and a, a version of that was operant effectual coaching. Um, operant effectual coaching gave me, I was just about going to close a deal with the RCMP up here in Canada. There was a um, eight person, well, seven person murder, one suicide. So eight persons uh, died. Um, and um, basically they wanted to train the RCMP uh, up here on a different way of interceding. And I've had mm -hmm. and numerous events in my life where I've been called in as a, as a negotiator to work through issues, um, usually mm -hmm. with pre-existing mm -hmm. or little e exposure, but sometimes pre-existing exposure to the people involved. Um, anyway, my point being is that you can quickly connect the dots and, um, and listen to language pattern and um, make high probability assumptions that can be tested almost instantly to get a deeper understanding of what the dynamic is and what's motivating the situation when you get a chance to actually talk to people and you mm -hmm. can hear um, their thought pattern because language is a thought pattern and that's one of the two coolest things like language is a thought pattern most people don't Think about it, but they just say, "Oh, those are just what they said." And sometimes they so they go, "But I didn't mean that." But your brain was organized to say that, and yeah. you may not mean it. So there's yeah. there's like the habit pattern that that causes words to come out faster than the way that we mean things, and both are mm -hmm. true. So, yeah. but it's now when you learn how to uh, listen to how people talk, you can actually figure out and weigh those differences. Yeah. Anyway, it's so it, true. It, it, I, it, I think I think of situations where, in your example, come into a situation which is you know, almost very very similar to come in. Is it like like in crisis mode? It's yeah. like we're we're sometimes things speed up for people. You know, you, you hear that with a football quarterback when they get a little experience, the game yeah. slows down. Absolutely. In those crisis in those crisis moments, it's like my brain slows down and I can see every piece and it's, it's, yep. I can almost function better in major crisis mode. Yep. No, I get and, it. And, and, and so because of that, I skip over the, like, well, sure I can live life normal, but in fact, I'm not doing life, you know, those, those life normal things because I'm processing it like it's crisis mode. And see, that's where mind models give you the ability to balance. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it it, it, it's like um, safety versus comfort, um, ask versus tell, um, you know, uh, clarity versus certainty, curiosity, how to use curiosity, um, which you use and you limit, like you've got these, the, this direct like pressure, almost like, anyway, I don't want to dive in. I could be here all day. You're fascinating. You're fun. Sorry. <laughs> I, I love That's your okay. mind. Yeah, it's Thank cool. You. It's cool. It's fun. Um, it's, yeah, it's unique. I don't hear that very often, so I'll take it. <laughs> no, it's a blast for me. It's like uh, I get to play here. What it's a cool like a playground! Sandbox, right? it's like a 
yeah. And and it's all there. And you're open enough to go, okay, yeah, I'm curious. You know, like prove it to me. And I love the fact that you've got this this really this open, but seriously, seriously in the background here, seriously skeptical mind, where I love it because in the first couple of minutes, you were like drilling down on every word that I was saying to figure out what it is. Let's just sit back calmly and do it. But it's like you got this really high-end, calm confidence thing that's just, you know, laser focused in on can this guy actually figure this shit out? Like you had confidence in me, don't worry. Like I, I saw that, but can he get me? And that's sort of like uh, the the yeah. part. And uh, yeah, yeah, and and you're you're like that twenty four seven. You know, Everybody. that's who you are. No, no, sorry, everybody is not. There are yeah. everybody is not, but you are, and that's a good thing. In some cases, it's a great thing. It's not always highly effective for you. So there's pluses and minuses, but there's pluses and minuses to everything. Yeah. Okay. And it's finding a balance because you're not right in, in balance. Like you don't like what you're doing with and around and to your family. When they happen, and I and I yes. am, um, what's the word? Not sporadic, but I am. Um, um, it is kind of sporadic, but I am. Um, uh, what's the word where you where you just, boom, you just go like you know squirrel kind of moment where you yeah. just um, go off and yeah. have fun. You instantly yeah. go into spontaneous. Okay. Spontaneous. Thank you. I am not spontaneous, not yeah. at all. And That's my okay. family begs me to be that way. And but when I am every once in a while, I might do something that's a little goofy, but it but inside it's like, wow, that was really freeing. Well, yeah. I'm not ready to do I'm not ready to do that again for a couple months, but I really enjoyed <laughs> it. You know, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah. And but, I don't like it. But, yeah, but the, the, but these are comfort. all manageable. Like you, you're taking emotions like you can't manage them. And what I discovered is the more I am in control see you're dealing with emotions like you have to react to them like they're they're uh, wh what i call why based emotions and i teach people to name and label what they're feeling and when you name and label what they're feeling it gives you all this flexibility to go out and be spontaneous in the moment because you're not threatening anything but if it's why you have to react and if it's anger, you are now a threat to yourself, your family, all the people around you, because you can really take serious action, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> very serious action. But if it's what, you can just express it. And so yeah. it's a very, very different way of doing it. And so um, I live I, in uh, Orlando. I live in Orlando. Uh, and I'm out there. I was just out there last week. I'm going to go to Disney tonight. And I'm going to be a kid. <laughs> Good. That's a great thing to do. Go I'm have fun. Go be, I'm just going to go be a kid. Yeah. You know? Go enjoy the rides. That's an awesome thing. Anyway, <laughs> Brian, it was a delight to have you on. Now, what I do always at the end of these things is to evaluate what worked for you. And if something didn't work for you, let me know. Um, I sometimes ask, what's one thing you might change as a result of this? And then rate it on a score this on a scale of 1 to 10. So what worked? You know, the thing, I, I think 90% of it worked. 
Um, mm -hmm. But but the, the the top of mind thing that maybe is that umbrella over all of it for me is that it sounds goofy, but you know what to somebody. But I feel like there's there's hope and there's a possibility. Oh, I understand there's a people. there's a there's a path on how I can bridge that other side. Yep. And and to me that's enough. I don't have to figure it out all, which is counter to how I normally am. I don't have to figure it all out. I just need to know that there's a bridge there, and I'm and I'm willing to get on the bridge and and see if I can't get over to that other part because I want that other part to be better. And I say like to my family again, I'm very trans. I, I want it to be better. I, I and, but I but inside I'm like I don't know how to make it better. So now I think there's actually a way to make it better. Um. Okay. Rewiringthemind.com. Go to wiring. Click the button. Buy button. Uh, rewiring your mind for wealth. It's up on the right, and then get rewiring your mind for wealth right on the land of uh, the first page, that home page. Two buttons to get the course. Your wife agreed she need to take a look, or I don't know if she's going to get it or not. But yep. you know, okay. as a family, you guys would benefit from that in so many directions. And Becky is one of the people that was on there. She said, hey, Blair, hey, Brian. And hey. Uh, and just uh, the point being is that that Becky has shared repeatedly and publicly that how her and her husband, Tim, have taken Rewiring Your Mind for Wealth and how it has shifted their, their life together, their marriage together, and got him talking and sharing differently. So it's really been... A godsend for for them. Try it out. I think it's going to definitely help your wife in terms of her business because she's getting three businesses going. Um, you know, two self employment opportunities and the third one a real full on business. And yep. this stuff leverages her. She's sort of capped out in certain ways of looking at things. This helps people break through. It can yeah. help you break through with your family. There's which, lots which in, of possibility. In, in addition, it'll help me break through. Even, I'll be, even be more effective in the other world too, I suspect. I guarantee you, so. you have no idea how you will be able to, to listen to language that other people are giving you and recognize they're making a judgment. This is not actually facts. This is an evaluation. That's an assumption, not a fact. It will shift your critical thinking and ramp it up a few notches from where it is. And that is it. enough. Yeah. That would be huge for what you're doing. Huge. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. So anyway. I think I, I think I, I get a record, I can get a recording in, in, in those links and I can find all that stuff. Oh yeah. So this is, this is on, uh, you know, uh, the Blair, the, this is on the Blair Dunkley experience. Uh, no, okay. this is in rewiringthemind.com. Let me be clear. It's in rewiringthemind.com. Not the website, but it is out there uh, in, you can go and replay this. So. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I will go, and, look, I will go look that. Thank you so much. Super. Thank you. Uh, one to 10. Um, 10. I mean, really, I mean, it was, I, I had no expectation. I, you know, I mean, I was just, I was a blank sheet. Yeah. And um, I look again, I look for tools. This is this yep. is a major tool for me. Super, super. So glad that you were on today. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And hopefully glad I could help in any small way. That would be super. Absolutely. So thank much. you. It's an honor to and meet you. I look forward. Hey, I'll if your itinerary is on your website, I look I'd love to hear you if you speak if you speak. I don't know if you do any of that stuff. I mean whatever. I'll 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 definitely Not look. Not yet. I have people that I go out and I, I visit and clients I see out in Orlando. Um, but I, you know, that's basically it. Uh, okay. So there's opportunities for things to happen always. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm part of EMP. So when EMP does stuff out here, and I believe your wife is, so that's one of the things. And I will okay, be speaking at NES, um, no excuses, 10, I believe. Um, so this year, uh, now, um, 
with that said, those of you that are watching here and are on here, uh, if you're not live and you're watching in a replay, I'd really appreciate it if you'd uh, like it and uh, type replay in the comments at least. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciate everything that everybody's been here. So great to have you on, uh, Becky, Pamela. Thank you so much for jumping on here. Uh, yeah, you guys take care. And... Uh, I'll see you later. And Brian, thanks again for everything. And uh, yeah, and Donna, My Donna pleasure. just says, hey, hey, hey. So there we go. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Donna, for saying hi. Got it. Okay, take thank care, you. guys. Thank you, thank Blair. You. We'll see Bye you. Bye for now. So we're off.